Today I want to talk to you about illustration annuals such as the Directory of Illustration and the Workbook. Before I get into it, I'm uh, thinking about doing a Q&A video. So if you've got any questions that you'd like me to answer in video format, feel free to send them to james at theillustratorsguide.com. Now, there are probably more of these illustration annuals around, but these are the biggest for the US market specifically. And if you're not familiar with these annuals, they are big books full of illustrators work, specifically designed to be a useful reference for clients to find the right illustration talent. And speaking of it, uh, useful references, why not subscribe to this channel and check out some of my other videos. The companies that make these books have big lists of art directors and advertising agencies that they send their book to around the US. And the idea is those clients keep the books handy in their offices and when they need an illustrator, they've got a book full to choose from. They might think, I want a traditional etching style illustrator for my uh, cosmetics brand. And they can flick through the books and uh, bookmark a few that they like. Now that in itself is a very good, simple system, if it really works like that. And I believe at one time it probably worked exactly like that. And it made advertising, uh, creatives and uh, art directors lives very easy to have a few of these books around the office. But do you know what's around advertising and creative agencies now? Computers with the internet. So why is it that these books continue to be popular? They must be doing something right. I know there used to be a lot more of these industry books, but now there are only two major players in the US. The others uh, have disappeared over the years. Presumably the internet killed them off slowly, leaving only the strongest to survive. If we assume for one minute that the book works as I've just outlined and it provides that valuable service to both the clients and the illustrators, then it's a service worth paying for. It makes it easier for a client to hire you, but it doesn't come cheap. The Directory of Illustration advertises a single page in the book published annually at about $2,500 or $4,000 for a double page spread. These are the most uh, recent figures I could find. It is a significant cost, especially if you're considering it before you're actually making money from your illustrations. Obviously, if it leads to a couple of jobs, it'll pay for itself quite quickly. There are a few other offerings to sweeten the deal too, like uh, digital portfolios on their fully searchable website, which we'll take a look at later. And on the Association of Illustrators website too, they have some kind of partnership deal there. You can get your work in a prime position on their homepage and a uh, subscription to Yoda List too, I think, which is uh, a mailing list of creatives, potential clients, let's say, that you can email yourself. I don't know Yoda List, but I've tried out similar services in the past with mixed results. The workbook doesn't advertise its price on the website. You have to make an inquiry via a form. We can safely assume it's going to be a significant cost too. I do happen to know they advertise an online only portfolio for $720 a year or $400 a year for a portfolio where you can only upload four images. Now if, you're, if I were really doing my duty and getting all the facts for you, I'd make a fake email address and inquire about the prices, but here's some information that's potentially more valuable than the exact cost. Both companies hire salespeople. If you sign up and get on their radar, they will contact you regularly to try and sell you on the benefits of being in their book or on their website. I should say at this point that I have only used one of these two companies. I've been talked to by the other company's salesperson on a regular basis, but I've never used them. I use one of the books now through the agency every year, but I also previously used the book personally when I was attempting to be an illustrator straight out of university. So although the latter was 10 years or so ago, I have experienced this service as a new freelance illustrator. Before I talk about the books anymore, I'll show you uh, around both websites and um, you can take a look at some of the books too so you can see exactly what's on offer. So here we've got the Directory of Illustration homepage and the workbook homepage. Uh, the workbook also uh, deals with photographers and directors and animators. But 
this is what the illustration uh, page looks like you can see a difference in in both I mean they're both doing the same job but I would say the workbook maybe looks a little bit more grown-up professional whereas the directory of illustration is a bit more fun maybe so on the front page of the directory of illustration you can see they have different areas so they've got new new work that's been added here specific job showcases uh, these these uh, front page spots and even like uh, featured image spots as well an animation here and these will be kind of refreshed every now and again um, because as part of your membership to the directory of illustration you'll get different kinds of perks which could include having your work on the front page um, for a certain amount of time or maybe a featured spot like this or maybe a featured project the workbook seems a little bit more formal to me I, I actually really like the way it looks I like that you can bookmark specific artists from this page here without looking through the portfolios they've both got a search function um, so you can filter it by style medium and um, what would you call this uh, I don't know uh, either that or you can type in a specific search term not like plants well that's a little slow but that's probably my internet and on the directory of illustration you can search for images so I could search for plants here or I could search artist by name now if we just dive into one of these names here you'll see that there are a lot of artists on here now I can't I don't know exactly how many artists are on each but this is loading here that there, there's a lot to search through if I'm an art director and I'm looking for um, a specific artist you know I could scroll through here all day long or I could or I could search um, you know, if, if it worked there you go you see that works fine um, let's look at specific portfolios and just to compare we'll take a look at this artist so again they're doing the same job this one's got kind of smaller images but it works just fine bigger images here and down at the bottom we've got a little bio some keywords and uh, specialties with here it's in tabs so I can see the bio here and I can see who to contact if I want to work with this artist the directory of illustration displays like this um, what would you call it like a carousel I suppose the image quality is not great here but it's uh, I, I doubt that is a function of the website possibly just uh, low resolution uploads here the gallery is a little bit cleaner I would say both of these are doing a, a great job of displaying the work I think they both look good personal preference would probably be the workbook because it's a little bit cleaner this is kind of a, a bit busy for my liking there's a lot of um, a lot of distractions but maybe that's a good thing maybe you know maybe that's uh, that's a good way to attract attention but the good artists on here will really stand out I think and the artists that aren't so good they'll just kind of blend into the background when I'm when I'm scrolling through all these thumbnails here we've got both books together the workbook is the smaller of the two easier to flick through by a long way the directory of illustration is a big old Bible now 
Aside from the agency sections, which have their own kind of style, a lot of the individual artists will design their own pages, so they all look completely different and unique, but the, the quality of the work varies. The directory of illustration is hardbound, uh, a little bit more difficult to flick through, but I, I guess that's okay for a reference book. And you can see some of the different designs that artists have put together themselves here. I think the directory of illustration does offer a design service if you don't want to design your own page, but uh, that will come at a cost, of course. And you can see there's quite a variation in quality in here. The websites are fully searchable. You can tag your images, type in keywords and descriptions. They're very functional and genuinely useful, I think, if you're an art director looking for illustrators. So there you go. Two very practically useful websites. They work well, they look good, and two books. One big, one small, but basically the same thing. Both companies have their own individual contact lists, but presumably there has to be some crossover in the people they're sending them to. So you could pick one or the other of these books. It doesn't make sense to use both. If you appear in one of these companies' portfolio websites, in theory, that's great. Your work appears on a website where clients specifically go to look for illustrators. That's one step closer to your potential clients. If you tag your images in a considered way, then your work will be equally as searchable as any other artist on there, so you have equal chance to make an impression. Well, no, not really, because, and forgive me for saying this, as a beginner, your work probably isn't as good as some of the more seasoned artists on, on there. So while it does become easier for a client to find your work, you are on a website competing with many, many uh, other illustrators. You know, the good ones will stand out to clients, but there's also a lot of irrelevant and average work in there too. This kind of website operates much like an agency website does. You know, all the artists are in one place. Super easy to find an illustrator, but with one big difference. The artists on an agency website are specially handpicked and selected, so there's a minimum level of quality. On a big portfolio website, anyone that pays can be on there. Uh, it can actually become more difficult to find the right illustrator because there's so much work on there that's wrong for this uh, hypothetical client. As far as I can tell, and I may be wrong, there's no quality control. If you pay, you can put your work on there. So there's a real range from top quality artists that will probably do uh, really well from these websites to quite low quality artists who are probably wasting their money and feeling very frustrated about the whole thing. If we assume you're somewhere in the middle as a new illustrator, you probably won't stand out as being one of the best uh, top 20% artists, so you'll likely blend into the irrelevant 80%. When the client is scrolling through endless thumbnails of different styles, they're only going to notice the best. You can put your work up on Behance or Dribble for free and face the same opportunities and competition as that. The advantage of these books uh, and their websites is that they actively promote work to their contacts through the book and mailing lists. Let's look at these companies' social media followings. I find it hard to quantify exactly how much work comes from social media. It's sure to have an indirect impact at least, so it's important, especially for something like illustration. Now here we've got two social media accounts dedicated to illustration with all the fuel they would ever need for Instagram from all different styles of illustration. The directory of illustration has 44,000 followers, just about, and the workbook has 33,000. Now those are not insignificant numbers, but in an age where individual artists can have 100,000, 200,000 or more, it's just not impressive. For a company specializing in marketing illustration, these numbers are not what they should be. If you look at an account like GFX Mob, which just posts great illustration, they have like 375,000 followers or something like that. Why don't these companies also have massive followings? Well. Maybe they would argue it's not their primary focus. The book is. Well, that would be a foolish argument. Social media is where people go to look for illustration. Now, 
and this is coming from me, I'm not a big social media guy, but if I'm looking for an illustrator, I'm not looking through a book. I've got two on my shelf uh, over there, and the first time I've opened them is for this video. Now that's not a totally fair assessment. I'm just one person. I don't re represent every client or every agent. Some people must use the book. If you go with the directory of illustration, and probably the workbook too, you are paying a lot of money for what should be a premium service. There aren't many things I would pay two and a half grand for every year, but I would expect a lot for that money, more than a single page in a 500 page book in an online portfolio. So let's look at the pandemic year. Uh, these companies filled up the books with uh, paid pages a year in advance, then all of a sudden the ad agencies are empty and the designers are all working from home. Who's looking at these books now? Nobody. There's nobody there to sign for the package, let alone look through the book. And I can't hold that against them. The pandemic was obviously disastrous for many businesses, illustrators too. It's not their fault. But things will undoubtedly change now. More and more people will be working from home, meaning the book that gets sent round to business addresses around the US will have less and less utility. The Directory of Illustrations website is good. It's really functional. You can find what you're looking for. The workbook are investing a lot more in their online offering with, with a focus on uh, more customizable portfolios for artists, I think. You know, both are going in the right direction. I don't know what the average art director in the US thinks about the workbook or the Directory of Illustration. I don't know if these are places that art directors go to find new illustrators regularly. Some must, but not all can. When I started illustrating, I was encouraged, let's say, by one of the book's salespeople. This is when I was brand new. And I spent 1,500 pounds or something like that, hoping uh, that it would lead to my big break. And that was money I didn't have to spend as a new graduate. I'm not even sure where I got that money from. But needless to say, it wasn't any kind of big break for me. I never got one job from it. But then again, my work wasn't good enough to attract clients at that time as a new freelancer. And maybe, as a beginner, yours isn't either. No offense. Looking back, I wasn't forced to spend that money. I was an adult, but I was also naive, desperate to make a name for myself and a bit too easily swayed by a salesperson. I believe it was, and is, unethical for a company to give the hard sell to someone so new on the scene. Presumably working in illustration, they have a good idea of what is popular and what kind of illustration is, is going to sell. So selling expensive pages to artists that simply aren't good enough to make their investment back is a bad thing to do. I look through these books now and I see a lot of good work, but also some work that isn't remotely at a professional level. Those people have flushed their money down the toilet. Now these companies have to sell pages to someone. New graduates are possibly easy targets, eager to get to a professional level, but also looking for shortcuts to get there. I don't think you should be spending two and a half grand on a marketing tool like this until you're making enough money to pay for it comfortably, because it is not a magic stepping stone to success. There's no guarantee you'll get any work from appearing in the books. If you pay to put your work in here before you've had your work validated by real clients, you might be wasting your money. It's a complete gamble. These books are not an easy solution to make you money. They're simply one tool that you can use or not. Same as Instagram or your website or a physical portfolio, like in, in real life, a real life portfolio. The selling point is, in theory, that this tool is better connected with the specific contacts that you want to work with. It's a bigger pool of clients than you can find by yourself, but it's uh, may what, uh, were way more refined than Instagram or, or Behance. It's targeted in the illustration industry. I mentioned that I use one of these books currently through the agency. It's one of many different marketing tools we use. It's definitely the most expensive one we use. The reason we use it as an agency is because we book out 20 plus pages altogether in the front of the book. And by doing that, we get a good price. I think a 20 page section in one of these books has a far bigger impact than one artist buying one page. One page is easily overlooked, but not 20. Some artists can see a direct impact on their new inquiries from the US as a result of being in the book. This doesn't apply to the uh, pandemic year, obviously, but uh, over the last five years, let's say, there are some artists that try it once or twice and don't get any work from it and don't want to do it again. That's fair enough. 
It's very difficult for most artists or an agency to know what the direct impact is though. If every client told you where they found your work, then you'd know how many new inquiries came as, uh, from uh, being in the book, but that's not realistic. If you go in the book for a few years, you might be doing okay, but it might not be clear if that's a result of being in the book. So you feel like you have to carry on being in the book out of fear of your commissions dropping off. How can you know? In my professional opinion, if you are a new illustrator that isn't yet making a living from illustration alone, these books are not for you. They're too expensive and they're not guaranteed to work. I said before that they're a tool. One of many tools a successful illustrator might use to find work. If you're making good money and you know your work is good because it's been validated by real clients, you can afford to gamble a bit on the workbook or the directory of illustration. If it pays for itself, great. If not, it's not going to financially cripple you. For a beginner though, these offerings are way too expensive for a gamble. Save your money and find your clients in ways that don't cost you anything except your time. The more money you save, the longer you can give illustration your full attention without having to get a second job. That time is way more valuable than what these books can offer you at the start of your career. If you're starting your career after university, you have very little money, but a lot of time to spend finding clients for yourself. When you're more established and you're busy with work, you're making a living, but you have very little time to go out looking for clients. That's when this kind of marketing tool makes sense. I'd really love to hear your experiences of these kind of uh, services, good or bad. I can see the value in it for certain people. I can also see a lot of artists wasting their money. If you've used one of these books already, let us know in the comments. Did you make your investment back? All right, that's it. Now for the big finish.